Hey everyone, so happy to be with you. Finally, she's uh, in one of my videos after so many years, right? So today I really wanted to do a video that I've um, been dying to do and it's my mother's conversion story. Um, we've never really taken the time to do it, so hopefully we'll do it today for you guys and we hope that you guys enjoy it. So as you guys know, my mother is half Cuban, half Turkish. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> So, I'm full Cuban, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, so as no you know, <laughs> I'm half Cuban, half Turkish, so my mother is the Cuban side, and uh, she will tell you a little bit more about herself. I have a couple questions here, so um, yeah, so the first question is, give us a little bit of your background, where were you born, and how were you brought up, etc. Well, I was born in Havana, Cuba, and um, in the time of Batista before Fidel Castro, uh, my father was a military man, a high position military man in Cuba. So we lived very comfortably, uh, being raised in the best schools, etc. So when Castro came along and we had to move out of the country because my father's life was at risk, we had to come to the United States. And we're very thankful that we were given the opportunity to have a home. Because once you're a refugee, as we know today, it's very difficult to be able to settle anywhere. So we were and we are very thankful that we were given that opportunity. And as you can see, we were able to build our home, have our children, have our grandchildren. And we've always been great citizens and love this country very much. Then once I came here, um, I st went to Catholic school most of my life. Uh, well, all of my life really until 12th grade. And once I became uh, a graduate, I started researching on religions. Uh, I wasn't satisfied with my religion. I wasn't happy within it because I had many doubts of the questions that could not be answered. So I started searching. And alhamdulillah, I found Islam. So basically that's my life up to Islam. So what made you start thinking of becoming Muslim uh, or what led you to give, to get into even thinking of Islam and learning about the religion? Well, in high school we had studied all religions. And once I met my friends that were from Syria and Saudi Arabia, I realized that within the religion classes, they didn't teach about Islam. It was really rare to see that and I was wondering and it made me very curious. So, alhamdulillah, Allah sent me my friends um, from the university and I was able to learn about Islam through them. They gave me a Quran, I was able to start reading it and they gave me many, many books so I would know the comparison about Christianity versus Islam, etc. And many of the questions that I had once I was Catholic, um, they were answered within the Islamic faith. So, this is... What were why? a few of those questions? Well, it was more of why do we have priests in the, in the Catholic religion that we go to confess to or we go to tell them our sins and they have the power to forgive us when they're human just like we are and they can sin just like we are. So that was one of them. Uh, another one was we used to go to Mass and we used to have communion and we used to supposedly eat the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And that was something that was, you know, once you're a kid, maybe you can believe that because you're used to stories. But afterwards, to me, that was very illogical. And I just couldn't accept it. But no priest could ever give me any answers of why that was. Also, the, the Trinity, you know, why I had to believe that in one person there was three. The God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And, I mean, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And really... You know, that was too much for me to to be able to logic in my brain. So those were just a few of the simple questions that I had that couldn't be answered. What did you find in Islam that brought you closer to the religion to say yes and want to become Muslim? For sure. Definitely the fact that Islam was a religion between God and me. That my, whatever I did, be it, you know, shown to people or not, God knew what I did, so it made me more conscious of what, you know, if I ever did anything um, that Allah would know and Allah would see, and there was nothing in, you know, I was raised very Catholic, 
which means that I had, even if I was misguided, I was very deep in my faith. And uh, it was a very big part of my life. So I had to live with believing in God and I didn't want to make him unhappy. So I loved praying, I loved uh, you know, doing charity, I loved trying to make people happy, which was what we were taught to do and love, you know, through Jesus Christ we were taught this. And and this is how I was raised. So it wasn't any different in Islam except that I was doing it for the one true God. And this is what totally you know, gave me the, open the road for me to be able to go into Islam. So how long were you studying the religion before you actually said I'm Muslim? Like how long was that time period? Oh, I must have read it very short. Maybe six months I had been reading and, and I was convinced that this is where I wanted to be. Uh, my parents thought that this was just a phase, you know, that I was going to do it and then they were betting on me that I would uh, get out of it eventually. But I fell in love with it totally, and the more I knew about Islam, the more I wanted to do for the sake of Allah. So, and and this is what I try to tell a lot of the girls, you know, that are new reverts. I try to explain to them that don't try to do everything all at once, because as the love of God comes to your heart and as the faith grows in you, you will automatically do what Allah prescribes. If, if you don't want to do what Allah prescribes, it means that you don't have the faith strong enough in you. You don't have the, the love of Allah or the trust of Allah enough in your faith. And you have to work on that to be able to be comfortable with the things that we do for the sake of Allah. So you were talking about your parents. Um, what were some of the, I guess, obstacles that your parents maybe put in your path? or? What are some of the things that your parents said that was a, you know were against you? Well, my father, since he was a military man, he really wasn't religious, so he didn't mind. He didn't care which way I went. Well, yes, he did. He told me, the only thing you can't be is Jewish, <laughs> whatever that came from. But I said, no, no, I'm not planning to be Jewish. Don't worry about it. But my mother, that was a very religious woman, she was very upset with me. Um, she always used to say, I can't believe you're doing this, I can't believe, and, and all her reasoning was because of what people would say. And, and this was very uh, bothersome to me, because all my life I had lived with what will people say because of my dad's position, because many people knew our family, and it, you had to do everything just so that we would show people that we were doing the right thing, instead of doing it because Allah wanted us to do it. So this is something that was very bothersome to me. And my one day I sat down with my mother and I said, Mom, I've become a better daughter. I've become more um, cautious of, of what I need to do to respect you, to love you, to take care of you. I've changed all my life now. Why do you think that I'm doing wrong by becoming Muslim? She said, my dear, you were such a beautiful girl you had such a beautiful body. You look so pretty in bathing suit and low cut dresses. Can, I, you can't wear that anymore. You can't go to the beach anymore. I said, Mom, I can go to the beach. I just have to cover to be able to go. And and why should I have to show my body to everybody for free? Why? What am I? You know? And especially to men that don't offer me anything, don't respect me, don't. Um, desire even to make a life as a, as a respectable woman with me, why should I have to be showing off in front of them and let, giving them the pleasure of seeing me beautiful when I owe them nothing, nothing at all. So this, this was when my life turned a hundred percent, you know, even if it was 75 before, <laughs> because I said definitely, definitely, That's I need, reason. that is the major reasoning that I needed to know I'm valuable, you know, I'm not just a piece of, of trash or a pe or an object that you can come by to please men that are, many of them, even worthless, you know. So I said, no, I have to learn more and more and more in Islam because Islam is what's giving me the self-esteem that I need to love myself and to respect myself and to value what God created within me. <laughs> so you were Muslim before you got married? I was ten years before I almost ten years before I got married. 
I was Muslim because I did take my Shahada. Number one, in the beginning, I because I didn't have many Muslim friends and I was studying on my own, I didn't even know I had to take Shahada. Even though to me I was practicing already, I was praying, I was fasting, I was giving Sakah. And one of my trips to Damascus, Syria, um, I get emotional because it was a very big turning point in my life. Um, one of my trips to Syria, it was the day of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's um, birthday. Uh, we went to a Sheikha's house because uh, we went to do zikr and we went to praise Allah and, and do, uh, we had a wonderful gathering with a lot of the beautiful women over there. And they asked me if I had taken Shahada and I said no. And I thought that I had failed Allah in doing that. So the first thing I did was accept the fact that I needed to take my Shahada and I took it. And it was the happiest day of my life. It was like if a rock was taken, a 200 pound rock was taken off my back. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And Allah, and Allah has blessed me with so much. It's wonderful. God really has blessed you with so much because you're a great person. And Allah's very happy with everything you do. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a very touching. Islam is very big in my life. And uh, as it should be to all of us. Mm -hmm. I am uh, willing to give up anything in my life in this dunya, you know, for the sake of Allah. How has it been raising Muslim children in a non-Muslim country? Like that, was it hard while you were raising us? Uh, truthfully, no. I mean, even that Allah made it easy for me. Raising Islamic children in the Western world, uh, I think that part of the gift that Allah gave me was to facilitate the fact that um, I raised my kids so easily, you know. Um, so I, what were some of the things that you did to like to make sure that we were raised to be good kids, you know? Well, number one, I was always, uh, I was always with you, you know. Um, yeah, sure. I, I made, I made, I made it a point that once I decided to have children, because I had an obligation with Allah to raise them as the most faithful as I could. And I wanted my descendants to start from me, you know, to continue to be the best believers and the best of worshipers of Allah. I always was with you, you know, I made sure that, that everything we did, we did together.